Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. Tony Khan says it's reasonable that AEW will be the most, second most profitable wrestling company ever. This was posted up a little while ago by Josh Nason on the front page of the site, F4WOnline.com. During his Thursday media call to promote Saturday's All Out, AEW head Tony Khan confirmed MJF's recent statement that his company is on the precipice of becoming the second most profitable company in wrestling history if they can, can secure a new TV deal. <clears throat> That's, I would hope they can secure another TV deal. This has been an imminent thing for, what, months now that we are going to get some sort of word on a TV deal. Most people believe it's going to be back with WBD. Most people believe it's going to be a pretty healthy increase. Will that stop anybody from dunking on it if you're a WWE fan first? No. But everything seems like it's going in that direction at some point. September 5th. Some point where we got to get that uh, got to get that out there. Khan was asked about a recent MJF interview in which the former AEW world champion mentioned that if AEW gets their new deal, they will be the second most successful wrestling company that ever existed. Tony says that's reasonable. Whether those cash flows happen overnight when the new deal kicks in, I can't say those things for sure yet, as there's still a lot to figure out. I do think that the die is cast that AEW will be the second most profitable company at this point of all time, which is very impressive for a promotion that is just over five years old and has been on TV for less than five years, Khan said, end quote. Tony Khan was influenced a lot uh, by Dave Meltzer and the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. I think it probably shaped how he looks at wrestling, his global view of trying to seek out a lot of different things. I think one of the things that maybe not be, uh, may have not have been a benefit to him, especially with the way his mind works, is uh, to pick up uh, run-on sentences, as Dave used to write in the old Wrestling Observer Newsletters there. But there you go. Uh, Khan then said, without getting into the semantics of the statement, mechanics and accounting... Uh, <laughs> they will indeed be the number two wrestling promotion, most profitable one of all time, even more so than WCW, which of course died a amazing, uh, incredible death that is still brought up and farmed out there for content today as, as Vice TV did. But, uh, I don't know if we're going to have that when it comes to AEW. In fact, I, I don't think we are going to have that when it comes to AEW. No spectacular burning and crashing there. Maybe we will. I don't know. They can light it on fire like Hangman Page lit up Swerve's house last night. And as we go into All Out, the show last night opened up with Daniel Garcia coming out and saying that he wasn't waiting for All Out. He wanted to beat up MJF. And MJF was out there in the stands and started, of course, taking shots at Daniel Garcia, brought up Daniel Garcia's mother, made Daniel very, very upset. Daniel Garcia went out and charged MJF into the crowd. At first, he was held back by security, and then he broke through that, got to Max, who met him with a bottle and immediately busted him open, knocked him to the ground, and then held his head and cut a promo on him and... It was a decision, and I know this is one that people jumped on Brian about, but I think he's right about this one. It didn't make Daniel Garcia look good. It made him look, you know, pretty darn flat, and it made him look really foolish. Anytime a baby face, it's been said a lot, but it's true. It's one of those things. If a baby face makes a promise, that baby face has got to follow through. If a baby face goes and runs to start a fight, and doesn't lose because of numbers or doesn't lose because of some sort of trap that was set by the heel that was inventive enough to put the baby face out, you don't want to do it. And in a case like Daniel Garcia, people like Daniel Garcia. They want to cheer for him. They want to get behind him. They don't believe that he's anywhere at the level of MJF. Maybe they want him to be. You know, I'm sure his fans want him to be. I'm sure AEW wants him to be. You got to push him up there and inflate him up. And this feud with MJF, hopefully that happens. He's got a great opportunity because 
There's no title on the line or anything like that. And MJF, I'm not saying that the man is Teflon, but MJF can take a loss to Daniel Garcia coming up at the pay-per-view and be okay with it. So maybe in their minds, they're thinking because Daniel Garcia may get the win coming up at the pay-per-view, we got to have something to show him laid out a little bit. We got to have something that, that shows him in some sort of peril. I didn't like it. You know, it's, again, if he would have been held back by security, then Max would have hit him. That's fine. But Daniel Garcia is not puffed up enough to me as a character yet where you can do those things. And it's a small thing. People say, well, you're, you're beating on it or you're, you're picking nits or something like that. But again, subconsciously with people that are watching, you know, that's an issue. It's the same way, you know, in reverse of what WWE did with Braun Breaker or what you do with somebody that you're pushing. You know, he was in there with guys that physically he looked bigger than or looked just as big as. He was a complete whirling dervish, a machine. And it put it in your head right now that this guy's basically, even though he's got some losses, kind of undefeated. He's at a different level. And you see how quickly WWE was able to mash him over. And you look at a lot of people that have been pillars of AEW since Jump Street, and they have problems. Daniel Garcia has been a guy that for a long time people have wanted to see, at least I have, kind of break out of the pack and be given something to kind of grasp, grasp onto. So hopefully he does get the win over MJF, and hopefully they kind of you know are care, more careful about doing this with guys just because it makes good TV or because now it's time to you know cut the really long promo. You know what I'm saying? And there were a lot of promos on this show, a whole lot of promos only four matches and seems to be i don't know i haven't gone back to do the research or anything like that but i remember filthy and i that were talking about the lead into all in and there were only four matches on the show and there was a lot of talking and if you don't like that you probably would not have liked last night's show only four matches on it uh the first one uh was again the one match that they had or the two matches that they had were to bookend the shows were was really good. But again, there were only four of them. Okada and Kyle Fletcher. I know people want to see Kyle Fletcher get victories, and I want to see him get victories more on Dynamite as well, too. Instead of just being out there in the quote-unquote banger match that he looks fantastic in, looks better than his opponent. I thought he looked better than his opponent, Kazuchika Okada here. Another case of that. But he doesn't pick up any Ws. And the only reason I'm not going to beat on that is because I think it can work within the realm of Don Callis because I can't see Kyle Fletcher staying aligned with Don Callis forever. He's just more of a, a baby face character. Now, in a team with Mark Davis, when Davis is ready to come back, if they decide to reform that team... You know, that's a little bit different. He can be more of a heel, but he wrestles like a baby face. He wrestles as little Will Ospreay. He's Will's friend. He's kind of, you know, his guy. He's the hillbilly Jim to Hulk Hogan. He's the Chief J Strongbow to Bruno San Martino. He's the Magnum TA to Dusty Rhodes. You know, somebody that somebody's going to get through or try to get over to get to the other guy. And I think... He's a really great guy to play that role and him going on a losing streak and ultimately having Don Callis be that upset where, with him where he doesn't want to use the screwdriver, he keeps losing matches, he keeps doing this or that. You know, ultimately him getting stomped out by the Callis family and having Will Ospreay rescue him, I'm actually good with that. So the match itself was, again, really, really good. I'd like to see Fletcher... Pick up some victories once in a while. You know, you don't have to kind of beat anybody over the head with it, but pick up some victories once in a while. But, you know, as far as him losing the big match right now, I'm okay with that because I hope there's a better story to be told with him. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.